Hi, today on my vlog I'm going to talk a little bit about something a lot of people ask me about, questions about, um, and it's the difference between violin and fiddle. So I thought I would give it a try. Uh, I'm not a violinist, I'm a fiddler. <laughs> I did study classical music though when I was a kid. I played cello and uh, the first part of learning uh, the fiddle was really violin. I, I studied Suzuki violin. So I uh, still really enjoy playing some of those tunes, um, some of the Bach minuets and things like that. So the first thing I, I guess we talk about is just holding the fiddle. Um, you know, it's really best to learn to hold the fiddle right, like the way a violinist would hold it. So I always say, you know, main thing is having the fiddle always sticking straight out like that. If uh, it's easy sometimes to get lazy and have your fiddle down here and hold it up with your left hand, but really, if you if you try to follow the the rules of, a, of holding the violin the proper way, it'll really help your left hand. It'll help your intonation and your technique of your left hand. So that is important. And the other thing too is the bow, holding the bow the right way. Um, but going back to fiddle, uh, I learned from a lot of old guys that you know weren't able to take violin lessons or fiddle lessons, and they just had to learn by watching someone around them play. And so there were a lot of crazy ways of holding the bow. Um, the way I hold the bow is I hold it like this. I, I put my thumb kind of between the frog and the grip and then my fingers like this. Um, but I learned from guys who held it up high. Like, so this would be more violin. I'm sorry, more fiddle. <laughs> they would hold it up high up like this. Um, even some people holding it with their fingers in the bow like this kind of thing. So pretty wild ways of uh, holding the bow and the fiddle as well. Um, I learned from a guy who would hold the fiddle like this. So you kind of push the violin against him and, and really keep it steady that way. Um, I knew a guy that held it like this. This was very strange. Um, I wasn't sure if he was doing it because he could hear it better, <laughs> but he held it like that. And so that was kind of interesting. So. Um, Basically, when you talk about fiddle, there's really not a lot of rules. Um, most fiddle players will, you know, find somebody to uh, study or somebody to, to learn after and um, just mimic other fiddle players, watch what they do and, and try different things and see what they like. But violinists study with a, a strict teacher for a long time who constantly corrects their posture and their technique and the way they hold the bow. and. Uh, you know, does so for a good reason, because if your goal is to end up in an orchestra, you're playing with another uh, 10 violinists and you don't want to stand out with some weird way of holding the fiddle or the bow. And you want to really match with what everybody else is doing. So um, that's a little bit about just holding the, the fiddle, violin versus uh, fiddle. Um, it's the same instrument, so, you know, I, I remember my teacher used to say fiddle sometimes, and sometimes he'd say violin. It's the same instrument. Um, it just, you know, depends on what you want to call it, you know, and the Cajuns in French would call it le violon, so they would call it the violin, but when they would talk about it in English, they'd call it the fiddle. <laughs> so, main thing about the fiddle, I find, is that you're playing a melody on one string, and you're catching another string as an open string or what I call a drone string. So you're bowing two strings and you're playing a melody on one and the other string is just ringing out to harmonize with that melody. So it's like, you know, the, you can play anything, you know, so. doubling everything with a drone string or even sometimes using two fingers or one finger barring across two strings to create a chord or some kind of harmony. Um, violin you find more single strings you know that kind of thing. So I'll play a little bit of Bach, I'll play a little minuet and then I'll play a fiddle tune. You can kind of see um, the differences but also the similarities because uh, Baroque music, you know, came out in the 1600s and as the violins spread across Europe, eventually made its way to the New World, 
um, it got into the hands of people who weren't, who didn't study violin, but knew folk music and other instruments uh, that were, you know, that they played their local music on and they converted that to violin. So, um, yeah, so let me play this minuet. So I think this is called Bach uh, Minuet Number no. 3, I believe. <laughs> parts a part b part um arpeggios that's the big thing in fiddle music especially old cajun music and creole music um you know you still find a lot of arpeggios and that was really what so much of baroque music was based on like that last tune um but you find that you know also in cajun music so uh just to play you a cajun tune one of the tunes where the arpeggio is just right in the beginning is the way the Balfour brothers play uh, Madeleine, which is like this. Uh... <laughs> sound you can hear the violin uh, Dennis McGee too had a lot of things that I found you know had Baroque qualities to it so uh, one is the one he called uh, one step to McGee but just that a part you know <laughs> That's an old Dennis McGee tune. So just so many of those patterns you find both in Baroque or classical music and you find in old, old fiddle music. Now, what happened in Cajun country in the maybe the 1920s, 30s, was uh, swing started to uh, be a big influence. So that's when the shuffle bowing started. So that's that really, that thing that really um, defines fiddle music. You know, when you hear that shuffle bowing. <laughs> You know, that kind of thing. So uh, that started to happen in Cajun music. And when that took off, then, you know, the old reels and uh, contradictions and things like that, that did have some Baroque influence, they kind of died out. But uh, there is a connection between the two. Uh, not so much anymore, though. Um, it seems like it's getting further and further apart, you know. So just wanted to talk a little bit about that, um, the difference between the two kinds of music. And um, I'll leave you with a tune. This, is, this one's really interesting to me. It's a, a tune that Dennis uh, played, and he just called it Mazurka. But to me, there's a lot of things in here, too, that I hear. You might hear in Bach or in Baroque music, early Baroque music. So it goes like this.
thank you so much for joining me at my vlog and check it out some more. Let me know if you have any comments or any uh, suggestions on what you'd like for me to talk about too. So, all right, have an awesome Christmas and I'll see you soon. Thanks so much.